from Connell's Key. It's the dazzling Tom Dora. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, around the blue trunks, trimmed with red and white, weighed in the Livingstone, seven pounds, eight ounces, extended his dribble to an A. Contest eight wins five inside the scheduled distance. Ladies and gentlemen from Dublin, Ireland, please welcome back Cohan Luke Kilo. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, the prize fighter series pitches to undefeated fighters in semi-final number two. Time to the bell is Jamie Carpatrick and our referee in charge of the action when the bell rings and the action begins is Victor Lachlan of Paisley, Scotland. And this is three three-minute rounds, semi-final number two. OK, boys, you know the rules. Obey my commands at all time. Defend yourselves at all time. God bless. Let's do it. Well, these two are both worthy winners in their quarterfinals, but neither man 100% convincing either. And a big question about the Dublin man with that right hand, which looked a little bit swollen when we saw it being iced in the dressing room. Will he be able to throw with power those right hands? Tom Doran from Connors Key in North Wales is the guy that's looking to try it and upset the odds here because Keeler is the man that came in as the big favourite and a mark around the left eye of Keeler as well. I think Dorn is a lot better now than he looked in his quarter final. He did a lot with customer and it was the, the only clash of styles that we've had tonight. I think he's a lot better. He looks sharp, his movement's good and he's a thinker. He thinks what he's doing. He's against a puncher here so I would imagine he'll think even more. That, that left eye of Keel has uh, opened up already, Jim. Yeah, uh, Don's getting the job, working there it is again. You sometimes worry with punchers that rely too much on power and they set themselves too much. So Keeler, I'm sure, have been told to busy up. He's walked onto the job, but he's got close. This is good stuff. from Doran. This is when he looked so good against Craig Cunningham in the quarter-final when Cunningham was uh, trying to lead off. Doran just picked him apart with counters. And here he is, he's trying to draw Keeler and punish him. And Keeler, with a lot of work, waving his arms around and doing this, that and the other, but not uh, scoring any points. Killer's oh, struggling to string anything together, Nick. You know, it's uh, single punches, you know, it's, it's difficult to pin Doran down. Don's movement's good, his concentration's good, and his punches are sharp. Exchanging jabs there. So I say waving your arms in the, air and in the air and showboating is all well and good, but it's not going to win you any points. He's not been allowed to use his power on the opener to get through with a right hand here, but uh, it's nothing without reply. There's another one. He's happy with that. Yeah, he does like to celebrate his successes, Keeler, as well, doesn't he? Maybe that's just in case the judges missed it, Nick. <laughs> that good left hook back. And uh, he acknowledged that one, Keeler, as well. It was clever from Doran. He evades that right hand. Yeah, we're seeing some quality right enough, Nick. This is, this is really good boxing we're seeing here. It's not slam-bang. There's two men. They know what they're doing. They're thinking about what they're doing. I'm leaning slightly towards Dorn so far. Again, Dorn out of range. Uh, Keeler rather out of range as Dorn just makes himself an elusive target. He's clever and he's composed, Tom Doran. Keeler goes back to his corner. 
with a big Wayne fist pump to his fans. Okay. Wayne just now walked in that double jab. Watch that walked in that double jab and banged the right hand over the top. He's moving after the right hand, okay? I want the jab before the right hand. The right hand follows the jab. Double jab, double jab. Get that jab to the body. Bang right over the top. You're moving the head well. You're moving good. You're smarter this time, okay? Let's now... Steve the Collins top. running the corner in the absence of his brother, Pascal Collins. Doing a pretty tidy job of it as well. Yeah, that was a good round. They both had their moments. Uh, I just kind of slightly like Doran what was doing. Good composure, I think you used that word during the round. Always with an answer. As we said, the uh, killer had his moments. Not a lot to split them. Oh, this is a good one. Like he doesn't look bothered at all, does he? Looking at Tom Doran there in his corner. And he's trying all the tricks, Keeler. I think they're wasted on Tom Doran. All the fainting, all the movement. They're trying to draw the mistake. He's a nuisance, Doran. He really is. And Keeler doesn't seem to be able to work him out. Oh, no. No. See, it's got a problem there, Nick. He's winding himself up for big punches, Keeler, when they should maybe be settling down and just finding a way to get the punches on target. And he's putting everything into these punches. When he misses, his balance is gone. And he's missing a uh, lot. Getting caught stuff. with counters just like that. And again, that jab. The left hand of Keeler all over the place. Well, we saw in the in the last fight, Cello Render just said, "To hell with accuracy! I'm just throwing punches non-stop." Keeler's going to have to up with his work rate a bit, you know. See, in these walks he takes on the ropes, uh, you know, they're not impressing anybody. He's just always taking a breather when he hasn't really done any work. He's not been allowed to string anything together, and that's his big problem here. Doran looking really comfortable and, that, and confident. And that was my comparison, Jim. Cello Render, OK, a lot of his work was ragged. He was working every single second of every round. And that got him home. Now, Keeler's problem is, you know, you're not remembering any real good clean punches from him so far in this round. Set himself for the big punches when really it should be busy up he's looking at. He's sliding out of trouble, Doran, and he's getting his forearms up to block punches as well. Meanwhile, that cut to the left eye is getting worse. Nice double left hook, one upstairs, one downstairs. As in the first round, the quality is coming from Tom Doran. Doing nothing with that left hand again here, Keeler. I mean, Killer must know he needs to give more of himself to get himself into this. Oh, he made a mistake there, Doran, and he left himself open to a left to the body. See, that's that touch gloves apology. You don't want to do that in there. Protect yourself at all times. And it's really fired up Keeler. And Doran finishes that exchange with a little cuffing left hook and then another straight left on the back of it as well. Well, Doran slowly walks back to his corner, but this is a look of a man who's in control of things. Okay, and this it's too, isn't. It's too close on my liking, right? You're going to have to win this 10-8 round to give me comfort. Come back, come back, come back. You hear what I'm saying, son? Yeah. For three minutes, son, I want you to get out there and force your heart. You had him on the wrong side. Well, Steve Collins is looking for a 10-8 round. So I think he knows his man is strong, and that's what you should never do. The other guy is at liberty to let a punch go. The referees give you a warning, get back down to action, never mind the apologies. Remember, Victor Ortiz getting knocked out. The Mayweather for doing the same thing. But I think Dorn is boxing beautifully on this one.
They're very fired up in his corner. Lawrence, the calmest of the lot of them, and Steve Collins, you heard him, he sent Luke Keeler out and said this has got to be a 10-8 round. Yeah, Steve Collins said the, same, the right things, he said this is really close, we want a 10-8 round. No, he didn't say you're behind. So you want to fire a fighter up, you want to bring the best out of him. And uh, that is really what is needed for Luke Keeler. Well, can Doran keep this going? I'm impressed the way Doran boxes at his own pace. You know, he's never ruffled, he's never really pressurised. You know, he just seems comfortable and confident in there. He's got a lovely casual look about his boxing, but sharp at the same time. And I'm baffled that he took three years out the game, Jim, as well, for, for work commitments, because he's a talent. Still only 27 as well. I mean, if he can come and win prize fighter, I mean, if he can get past this fella and then tame Cello Render, a lot of ifs there. I mean, that could open a lot of doors for Tom Doran. Bit more urgency coming from Keeler now. And more hip but movement, he made those, he, he made him miss there with those lefts. And I think again there was a, a clash there because he was grimacing as he came away there. Keeler. Yeah, I don't know if it's the hand that you've already mentioned. Uh, I didn't see anything else there. I wonder maybe if Keeler is boxing with one hand. Oh, good shot from Don. me a little bit of an, an early career Scott Quigg here this Tom Doran early career I'm not making that comparison oh, this is better though from Keeler and Keeler is really starting to bring some heat now still waving that arm around but Doran's left jabs are falling short in this round it's better from Keeler. Is it going to be enough to turn this fight in his favour? No, Keeler's not doing enough. He needed a huge round. I think he needed a knockdown, actually. Now, that's another apology he wants to forget about. Not everyone's as unsporting as you, Jim. I would not from a distance, Nick. I'll say sorry, but do it from a distance. Last few seconds here. And again, more showboating, more waving of the arms around from Keeler. I wonder how much of a factor that right hand has been for him. Because it was swollen. But Thorin has showed intelligence, composure and poise here. Nice left hook from Keeler right on the bell. But I'm with you, Jim. I don't think he's done enough, Keeler, to nick this one. Doran no. is certainly celebrating, and he was celebrating right in front of the Irish fans and the balcony. Yeah, I mean, even scoring the last round to, to, to Keeler, you could be you, know, you could be fairly gracious because there wasn't a lot in that, even the third round. And I think uh, Doran did more than enough in the first couple. And I think the the talking to that Keeler got at the end of the second round, maybe his corner felt pretty much the same, I think he lost it, he took too long to get going, he certainly improved in the last round, but uh, for me, Doran is the one who should go through, and he really looks the part, and he looks as though he's paced both of his fights beautifully, with plenty left for the final, if he gets there. They have it 29, the, the third round of score to Keela, but there wasn't an awful lot in it. If it hinged in the last round, I would have been swinging which way to go, but uh, certainly a big improvement in Keeler's work, but I just thought he left it too late. And while you're talking, I'm looking at Steve Collins and the rest of the crew there in the Keeler corner. They don't look like a crew that thinks they've got this. And if there's one guy who knows the game inside out, it is Steve Collins. And, I don't, and, and I'm looking at him now, Jimmy. He doesn't look like a man who thinks his man has won. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, an amazing semi-final, and now the judges' scores. Judge Phil Edwards scores a contest 29-28, Judge Terry O'Connor 29-28, and Judge Ian John Lewis 29-28, and all three judges are in favour of the winner, who will join Cello Render in the final from...
Connors it's takes Tom 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 and Tom it's the right decision. And look who's first to congratulate him as well. So, it's Cello Renner, who's been here before, against the fella that sprung a couple of surprises. Tom Doran. And